So Gog and Magog, they would be a creature who would jump like their like chimpanzees, like their physical features would be something like chimpanzees or apes. Uh, and they would they would be huge, big creatures, and they would have a a grudge for the humans uh, for some reason, probably because they were uh, they were uh, closed in a in a closed space by Zul Karnain. Uh, so they would kill humans and, would, and they would destroy the crops. They would kill everything left over after the fight between. Uh, Antichrist and Imam al Mahdi, so the earth would be cleaned off, like not cleaned but destructed, and there would hardly be any life left. But the people would, with Imam al Mahdi would be given a special, special uh, hiding place that Imam al Mahdi would lead his people into that place, into Medina. And those people would be safe from the fitna of the Jal, and those people would be safe from Gog and Magog as well. Then Imam al Mahdi would take his people to Isa alayhi salam, who would be uh, in, in a hilly place, and they would join each other. And then that would that event would uh, would happen where Imam. Uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam would ask Imam al Mahdi to lead the salah, but Imam al Mahdi would not want to. But eventually, they would agree uh, that Isa alayhi salam would lead the prayer on this um, uh, one point that Isa alayhi salam would lead all the prayers afterwards, and Isa alayhi salam that would be uh, a statement. A practical statement that Isa alayhi salam would come not as a prophet, not as the son of the God, Nauzubillah. He would come as the follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as the follower of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, he would offer the prayer, after, offer the salah after Imam al Mahdi. And then Isa alayhi salam and Imam al Mahdi, all of them, will live together for some time, Allah knows how much time and then there would be a cool breeze according to a hadith and according to Imam al-Mahdi as we know Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim who has been uh, recognized as Imam al-Mahdi and according to his dreams that cool breeze mentioned in a hadith is actually some sort of uh, flu or some sort of like very soft kind of um, uh, of, of uh, illness or something uh, that people would die one after the other and that would happen uh, where the Muslims are and the Muslims would be with Isa salam and with Imam al-Mahdi in Madinatul Munawwara and they would uh, be dying one after the other so much so that, that uh, they, once the Muslims come back after burying and offering uh, Salatul Janaza of one Muslim when they reach back another would be dead and so on and so forth the Muslims would be dying one after the other and all of the Muslims would pass away and the rest of the earth and on the rest of the earth there would be scattered people and according to hadith they would be so worse that they would be openly doing the awkward, awkward things uh, they, they would be openly uh, doing uh, the acts of um, sexual acts and so on uh, openly doing like the donkeys uh, according to some narrations so they would be very worse people they won't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they won't be the worshippers of, uh, uh, of of, of uh, like they, the very satanic bad worst people worst people I would say the earth would be left with those people and those are the people on which the trumpet would be blown on which the sewer as we know would be blown and those are the people upon which the Qayyama would occur and it would be so sudden that those two people who are purchasing and selling cloth would not be able to complete that a person pulling out water out of a well would not be able to finish his thing and whoever is doing whatever would be finished 
right then and there, their economy, their, their material, there will be very few people, not too many. Uh, their economy, their, their, their material uh, uh, achievements or, or, or material belongings would be fine, but they would be the worst people and those are the people upon which the trumpet would be blown. And that's how the sequence from today until the day of Qiyamah would occur. And if I mention uh, approximate years as well, that would be that would be enough to open our eyes even, even at this point when Imam al-Mahdi has been recognized at this point we know the approximate timelines as well even if at this point if we don't open our eyes even if at this point we don't show our allegiance to Imam al-Mahdi there would be no, no worst thing that we can do to ourselves uh, and since we have, we know that Imam al-Mahdi has been recognized, so according to, we, we can do a separate detailed sessions on uh, how these dates are uh, calculated, but you can roughly understand that Imam al-Mahdi started telling his dreams, bringing people to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, telling people to avoid polytheism, shirk, when he was 40, and from 30, from his 40 years of age, 13 years would happen in I think 2027 or 2028. So the bay'ah at the hands of Imam al-Mahdi would happen at the age of, uh, in the year 2028 approximately. You can add, add seven years to that uh, when the jal comes and you can keep a cushion of two years because according to some narrations Imam al-Mahdi would rule seven or nine years. So maybe that is the cushion for the wars, uh, the, the situation building for the wars and so on. Uh, so Ghazwatul Hind and Malhamatul Qubra, so you can have a cushion of two years after Imam al-Mahdi takes oath. So 2008 plus seven years, that would be 2035. Or you can have the cushion of two years, 2037. The Jal appears. 40 days, 37 days to be precise, uh, in 2035 or 2037. In one month, the Jal would be finished. Hazrat Isa would descend from the sky the same day the Jal is finished. And the same day, most probably, uh, Gog and Magog, Yajuj Majuj are released. So two, we are talking about 2035 or 2037 when Hazrat Isa would be among us, inshallah. The Jal would be killed, Gog and Magog would be released, the earth would be destructed fully, completely, human generation would be finished, mostly animals and crops and so on, things would be finished as well. Only a few people, maybe a few thousand people with Imam al-Mahdi and a very scarce population of uh, worst people around the world uh, who would not be uh, with Imam al-Mahdi and we are talking about 2035 or 37 and Isa salam, according so to some narrations would be on earth for 40 years and according to some other uh, narrations for 7 years. So how come we settle for uh, a balance between the two types of narrations? So again that's my personal understanding that Isa salam, we know was raised to the sky when he was 33 years of age. So if he stays on, the, uh, on earth for 37 years, he would, be, he would pass away when he would be 40. So I think that the balance between the two narrations would, uh, would be that Isa salam, would be on earth for 7 years and he would pass away when he would be 40. And he, his total lifespan on earth would be 40 years. Since he was born, 33 years, he was raised to the sky, he comes back at the same age. People, we don't age beyond this earth, we don't age in the heavens, we won't age there. So he would come back when he would be 33 again. And for seven years he would be on earth and he would be 40 when he passes away again so 
uh, we can we can have an approximate calculation of when that cool breeze would happen and all of the Muslims would pass away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us uh, shahada, but uh, ones among them who would be alive at that time can be sure that you cannot be alive beyond 37 plus 7 years, 2044. You cannot be alive beyond 2044 for certain 2044 all I'm not talking about the date of Qiyama I'm talking about the final dates the final year when this Ummah would be finished uh, there would be no Muslim on earth anymore and we this is shocking even if we are not shocked yet even if not, if we are if we are not shivering with these calculations, we are not having goosebumps. Then there is something very, very wrong with us. There is some kind of covering on our hearts. There is some kind of I don't know what. We must be shivering. We must be frightened. We must be shocked. We must have goosebumps with this very clear specific calculations that we know by now <coughs> excuse me that none of us can be alive beyond 2044 or most probably 2042 or max 2044 and this is some people start pointing fingers that nobody knows the date of Qiyamah except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not even tell the date of Qiyamah to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Only Allah knows that. I'm talking about the age of this ummah, the Muslims passing away. And I told you with the authentic references, this calculation is not based on guesses. This calculation is because of what has been told by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He told us with date, with, with, uh, with the timelines. 40 years of age of Imam al-Mahdi, 13 years before his bay'ah, 7 years of his uh, rule, then 40 days or 37 days of the Dajjal, then a few days of uh, Gog and Magog, then the 7 years of uh, Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salatu wasalam. So everything, the timeline has been told. Once you know who's Imam al-Mahdi, you can start calculating everything from his age. When he is 40, he would be recognized. When he is 53, he would give bay'ah. When he is 53 plus 7 years, 60, uh, the jal would appear. And 37 days, the jal would be done. Hazrat Isa al -Islam would come back from the sky. Gog and Magog, everything would happen in, in very few, like very short span of time. Like the hadith, when these signs start appearing, they would start appearing in a way that if you, if you, uh, if you break a necklace, the beats start falling similarly these events would be start would start happening right after the other night not like uh, the the world was moving normally before that so this is what would happen so you can be sure that 2044 we would be done